Good evening, I'm Ariel Gomez, tonight on DITV. Leaders in the Iowa City and University community want a voice when finding sports replacement. Plus, why did a local establishment lose its liquor license? And is the increase of course websites hurting printing stores and course pack sales? These stories and more straight ahead on DITV. Good evening and thanks for being with us on DITV. I'm Ariel Gomez. And I'm Becky B. Ryder. In our top story tonight, the House of Representatives will be taking a vote this Wednesday on a budget reconciliation bill. DITV's Shelby Cloak is here to tell us how this will affect us students. Shelby? Well, Becky, the bill would cut $12.7 billion from student loan programs, including those here at the University of Iowa. If passed, undergraduates here at the UI with federal student or parent loans will be directly affected by the bill's rising interest rates. Students with federal loans right now have variable interest rates, but the proposed bill would fix the average student interest rate from 4.7% to 6.8%. This means the average student who graduates in four years with $20,000 in loans would end up paying at least $2,000 extra dollars in interest on a standard 10-year payment plan. Parents with a $20,000 loan who typically have a 6.1% interest rate would have a fixed rate at 8.25%, taking an extra $3,000 out of their pocket on the same payment plan. But students and parents aren't the only ones upset about the bill. Director of Financial Aid Mark Warner says the bill is a bad idea. Selecting out federal student aid programs to represent one-third of the overall savings of this Budget Deficit uh, Reconciliation Act is just is not, is not right. One positive side of the bill is for first and second year students. They will be able to receive more federal money than in the past, but the interest rates will still be fixed, leaving them more in debt at graduation. Which is always a big concern for all these graduating seniors. Thank you for that report, You're Shelby. Welcome. Early dropout may not be an option for Iowa high schoolers in the near future. Iowa lawmakers are thinking of passing a law that would keep students in school until they turn 18 or graduate. Since 1991, teens have been allowed to drop out of high school once they turn 16. Changing the dropout age could mean more money for school districts, about $19 million worth. Currently, there are about 3,500 high school dropouts who aren't counted when determining funding for public schools. And more and more of University of Iowa professors are jumping right on the electronic wave, choosing to put their course packs online. Students used to go to places like Suffer to get supplementary course materials, but with professors putting those materials online, students are saving about $17 for every would-be course pack. Even so, Suffer campus in Iowa City says profits have not taken that big of a hit. We are seeing a lot more course packs being done online, that's for sure. Um, but as far as our business goes, we're still seeing a fair amount of growth semester over semester. And professors, like students, are saving on royalty fees since they're making content available through password-protected sites. With President Scorton leaving the university, the Board of Regents gets the vote in deciding who becomes the next president. But what about faculty and students? A joint meeting was held today to discuss the selection process. Representatives from the Faculty Senate, Staff Council, and UISG want to maintain the 40-plus year tradition of having a say in the future president. UISG President Mark Preswick emphasizes the importance of these, repre of these representatives being involved. The quality of the institution is at stake here. Um, how the culture of it, the environment of it, is uh, absolutely in question right now, and uh, that will play out over the next couple of weeks, and it's very, very important to see where that direction goes. UISG will hold a formal vote tomorrow at their regularly scheduled meeting regarding what actions they want to take. And in an update on the Roger Bentley trial, deliberations are expected to begin tomorrow after lawyers for the prosecution and defense meet with the judge today. At the end of last week, the judge dismissed the jury for a three-day weekend. The break allows attorneys to have a work day, which will help them determine how jurors will process the evidence. 
and residents near the Common Go gas station on Burlington and Market Streets will have to go somewhere else to get their liquor. The state suspended the store's license for 30 days for selling to a minor. Now, where alcohol used to be, there is brown paper and the coolers are chained shut. Some of the alcohol has been relocated to other stores, but some still remains for when the store gets the okay to sell alcohol again. Although an inconvenience for some, most know where to find the nearest liquor store. I was a little frustrated just because it was another trip that I had to make when I had already made one, but the walk wasn't that bad considering that it's just up the street to get to Liquor House. The Common Go should get its license back on February 16th. And in an effort to crack down on internet porn search, Republican lawmakers in Iowa's legislature want to propose a new law requiring filtering software to be installed in all libraries that receive some form of government funding. The lawmakers say libraries should face the same restrictions as movie theaters and rental stores when it comes to blocking children's access to adult movies. The new technology that's being pro proposed will block access to pornography at libraries for all users, not only for children. Often a topic that may make some blush is sex, but last night was on everyone's mind. No, this was not an average conversation, but one led by an expert on sex, or a sexpert. Dr. Ann Laros from Student Health led a question and answer session last night. Topics ranged from STDs to masturbation. Several students came for various reasons. I just like to hear other people's opinions on things. So. For more information about these topics, you can always consult student health, and I really don't know how to transition with, to that without being awkward, so here's Mike with sports. You can also consult me, Becky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, 16 wins on February 1st with nine games to play puts the Iowa basketball team atop a very difficult Big Ten conference. But there's a catch. The Hawkeyes share first place with Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. One area with room for improvements has been Iowa's play on the road thus far. The Hawkeyes are 3-5 and five on the road and have some skeptics questioning Iowa's toughness. The Hawks face one win Purdue on Wednesday, and Coach Alford knows with three of the four next games on the road, his team will be tested. The teams that have won the, the league titles are always teams that usually go 8-0, 7-1, and, and then they win four or five road games. Uh, that's usually what happens now how this is all going to play out of how many losses are still yet to see. But a uh, rule of thumb throughout our league, unless something really special happens, if you go 8-0 and oh and 4-4, four and four, if you don't win a league, you're right there in it. Uh, and obviously that's still a possibility for us. Reasons why myself and I wanted the team to go over and just you know, show the appreciation to the student body that if they're not allowed to come see us, then we'll go see them. Because uh, I think they've just been tremendous. Trying to do what we can here on the road, and we're trying to get every win possible. And you know, obviously, we want to win every game, and and we're going to go out there and fight like, uh, you know, like we're capable of. Holeska was honored as Co Big Ten Player of the Week, sharing the award with Michigan's Daniel Horton. Holeska had a career week, leading the Hawkeyes to victory over both ranked Indiana and Ohio State. The junior shooting guard tallied his first double-double of his career against Indiana and scored a team-high 18 against Ohio State. Haleska and the Hawks travel to West Lafayette Wednesday for the 7.05 tip-off against Purdue. And over the weekend, Iowa diving records were shattered as senior Nancy Lee Underwood set a new Iowa and personal best in the three-meter dive. Underwood, who previously held the record, scored a 400.05, nearly 35 points higher than her previous mark set at Minnesota earlier this season. Underwood and the Hawkeyes return to the pool next Friday when they travel to Cedar Falls to face UNI. And switching gears, the men's tennis team opened its spring season on Sunday and overpowered Northern Illinois 6-1. The Hawkeyes won five out of six singles matches and swept the doubles competition. Sophomore Bart Von Manju has anchored the number one singles spot with 7-5 record this season. The Netters traveled to Kalamazoo, Michigan on Saturday to square off against Western Michigan. The Broncos defeated the Hawkeyes last season 5-1. And Becky, we will have more on Nancy Lee Underwood tomorrow in sports, hopefully. Have a good one. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Mike. Well, today we saw highs in the lower 40s, but those even higher winds seem to cool things off a little bit more. Tomorrow, expect a high of 43 and some clouds. And Wednesday, we'll see similar temperatures, but some rain in the morning. And Thursday, things will warm up to the low 50s, but the rain is still going to be with us. As long as it's rain and not snow, I'm happy. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> exactly. And here's a look at some of the stories in tomorrow's Daily Iowa. Hello, I'm Louis Fertle, uh, DI arts reporter and critic. Uh, in tomorrow's Daily Iowan, the story about a family's fight against an aggressive illness, UI's Board of Regents wants to lead the search for a new president, 
And lawmakers want to increase the amount of alternative fuels. These stories and more in tomorrow's Daily Iowan, and now more DITV. And that's the news for tonight. I'm Ariel Gomez. And I'm Becky B. Ryder. Have a fantastic night, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.